Hello everyone, this is Roberto Matthews with another tip. And this time it's a tutorial again. I was asked by one of the users to expand on uh, the SVGs that I'm doing and include the arcs. Now, arcs was a little bit of a challenge to wrap my head around, but once I did, it was very easy to understand. And so I'm gonna pass all that knowledge on to you and um, not have to make you go through that work because the uh, the actual Mozilla developer site kind of does a hard does a, doesn't do a good job of explaining the thing. Okay, so uh, we if you had any questions on how to do any of the other simple um, shapes, go back into uh, my playlist there of tutorials, and uh, it'll brush you up and. I also made this grid line to make it easier. So if you wanted to know how I created this grid line, these grid lines, also it's on my uh, description below the other videos. Okay, so let's go on. I've pre-populated everything so that I, we don't have to do too much of the coding, uh, but just a quick explanation here. We have uh, the grid lines right here, all the paths that make up the grid lines. And then we have uh, the styling in here. Uh, just in case you didn't know, you can put styles directly in the SVG so that when you transport the SVG file, it could transport all the styles along with it. And then I have these little points here that is gonna help me uh, uh, teach you exactly how the arcs work, okay? So uh, part of the arc kinda works like a curve but uh, you have to remember that an arc is a section of a circle, okay? It's a section of a circle or an ellipse, okay? So let's go ahead and draw it out. So let's talk about what parts are there to the arc, okay? So the first part of the arc or of any path, as a matter of fact, is where we're gonna put our pen or where we're gonna start the drawing. So since I have my starting point here at 2050, we're gonna put our starting point also at 2050, okay? And so for the arc, it's an A code here, and the A code is uh, simple to use uh, once you get your head around it. So let's, let's break it down, okay? You need several coordinates. The first set of coordinates, uh, we're gonna just put it at zero, zero, is just like a circle or an ellipse, it's the radius for X, so in other words, how wide the circle is and or ellipse. And the radius, the second one is the radius for Y, how tall the, the uh, ellipse will be, okay? So if these are equal, this will be a circle, okay? The next parts, so we'll, we'll separate these by uh, commas. You don't need commas in your code, but I like to use them in order to organize everything. So the next section is uh, how you're going to rotate your um, the rotation of your ellipse. Obviously, if you rotate a circle, there's not much of a rotation there, so it really will look better when you use an ellipse, but I'll show you how that works in a second. The next two are the most complicated part of how an arc works, and they call it the large arc flag, and they call it the sweep flag. Um, I will explain it. Uh, these are better, uh, suited for showing rather than explaining or show or explaining as I show. Okay. And then there's the last two, which are the ending points. Okay. So where, uh, everything's going to end. And as you see, as since I put zero and zero, it's ending at zero and zero, but my end point, I want it to be at 80, 50. So 80, 50. Okay, so now here's our arc. Obviously, it's a straight line because we need to do some, uh, we're going to make, make some updates here, okay? So let's start with the simplest part, which is the radius. Now, what's awesome about an arc is that this number can be any number, for example, one to one. So one to one means that it's a, it's half a circle, okay? It's the bottom half of this circle, okay? So basically, the way it works is as long as this and this are equal, 
it's going to blow it up to the to the to fit the size of your beginning point of your start point and your end point okay so even if I put it at um, 10 by 10 it's still going to become a circle because what it's doing is it's going to blow up or expand rather the ellipse or in this case the circle up until the point where it's the beginning and the end point okay now you do have to realize that you're doing a little bit of math um, as always so the actual dimensions of this is 30 the radius is 30 as you can see from the center point here it's 1 2 3 it's 30 so the maximum radius that I have here is 30 by 30 okay so that's the maximum radius now let's go back for a second to one by one okay so now we have a circle that has the same amount of width and height so if we want to make an ellipse a simple ellipse or half ellipse with this arc let's go ahead and for example make it taller than it is wider so we're going to go twice as tall as we are wide and as you can see our ellipse kind of sticks out here so let's go ahead and modify this this is a great opportunity to see how we can modify this ellipse to fit in in our area here a little bit better so let's bring this down let's bring our two points here this point we're going to make it 30 50 and this one we're going to make it 70 50 so as you can see we've brought our two points in a bit okay so that means that our starting here is going to be 30 and our ending is going to be 70 okay so now we have a smaller ellipse to work with so that is a little bit more manageable so as you can see we still that one to one so if we wanted to make it twice as big or twice as long as it is uh, wide that's half of our ellipse okay so up until this point we're we're set we know what we're doing here okay um, also uh, let's make our fill here a little different color so we can see our uh, stroke so let's make it uh, sky blue or royal blue I like royal blue okay so now we have a nice royal blue fill here okay so the next easiest coordinate that you can that I would like to look at are is this second coordinate here okay the second coordinate here has only two values which is actually both of these only have two values but this one here has two values and it's the easiest one to understand now the sweep flag um, is what it's called but what it does is it basically flips it along this axis ax, axis <laughs> so for example if I did a, make it a one now we have the top part of the ellipse and again here's the zero the bottom part of the ellipse okay we're gonna be using this a lot in order to understand the rest of what's going on here okay so for example what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and paste it underneath now we have two two paths one on top of the other but this one here we're gonna make this one the top one so top means it's one okay so now we have a complete ellipse so as you can see this is how it's a complete ellipse okay now we it's easier to understand what's gonna happen here which is the rotation so again just in case I lost you the first two numbers are how wide and how tall now the reason this is one and the reason this is two is because it doesn't matter what these numbers are as long as these numbers are l lower than the actual radius of the um, of, of the figure because the actual radius in this case is now 20 20 is the radius because we're 20 away from the center okay 
So what we just did here is and instead of using actual numbers, we're using proportions. And that's basically the best way that I like to use uh, arcs, just using proportions. So what I said is for every so so the it's one, I'm sorry, it's twice as big as this. So if we wanted to make it instead of that, if we wanted to make it uh, for every three, four, then that's going to be the shape, a little bit more of an egg shape like that. OK, so for for it's going to be basically this width is 75 percent of the height. OK, so I know I'm throwing a lot of math at you, but hopefully you're you're um, kind of getting it. If you have any questions that I cannot or have not answered, please go ahead and put them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to elaborate on what I'm talking about. OK, so once again, we have the one the first part which is the x the x um the width or the radius of x and then you have the second number which is the radius of y okay and then this number we, we're ignoring for now and this number we're ignoring for now this right here is the ending point it just tells you where the arc is going to end okay and then we have these numbers which is what we're working on right now these two numbers this number tells it to go above the the um, the midline and this tells it to go below the midline okay now let's talk about this number this number is the next easiest number to think about this number talks about uh, or or is your rotational axis okay so the best way that I know how to show this is to actually rotate both at the same time so what we're going to do is we're going to rotate both of them to 45 degrees and as you can see it's 45 degrees now if we were to take this out of here as you can see this is the top part still this is just the top part so you can have the top part of your arc look just like this and then of course you can have the bottom part of your arc like this okay so the only number that's different here the only number that's different is this zero or one so this right here is where we split it where will we split okay make sense I think that's I think you got it I think you got it Okay, so now this leaves uh, a quandary here. As you can see, this is kind of let's go back to let's go back to this percentage here. Okay, so or degrees we're at zero degrees. So what would happen if I went to ninety degrees? Well, I'm at ninety degrees, but what happens is now this part of the this part of the arc right here is too wide to be between the ending and the starting points so it's it's brought down and what's actually happening is something really interesting which I'm going to show you in a second but let's go back to zero here okay now we're gonna we're gonna erase this one for now And we're going to talk about what happens if we go above the actual radius. So like we said before, the actual radius of this is um, 20 at, in this case. 20 is the actual radius. So if we went up to 20, 20, okay, if we went to 20, 20, this is a, this is a perfect circle right now. It's 20 this way. It's 20 this way and it's 20 this way. OK, but what if we went out to, let's say, 40? So if we went to 40, now 40 is too wide. So what it's actually doing is it's bringing down the circle so that the circle is basically right here. Now, this is where the circle is. And to display that, to show you that we're going to make a circle. And we're going to uh, put the center at 50 and center Y at 50. And then say radius 
equals, uh, we said 20, right? 20. Okay, so here's our right, here's our here's our normal circle here. Okay, so if we were to take this circle and let's see, style and bring it down so we can see what's going on here. Here's the circle right here. So if we move this down, if we make the, the circle radius like we have the radius here, 40, this is what's going to happen. Oops. We have this wide circle here. So in order for it to fit inside of here, we have to move it down. So let's move this down here. Oop, too wide, 80. So as you can see, this circle fits right here. That's where the circle fits, okay? So what we've done is, since the radius of the circle is too wide, okay, it's had to push the circle down in order to fit. So that's what's that's the part of the arc that we're going to be using. This is what this is the part of the arc, okay? Now that brings me to what this number is. This number gives you which part of the circle you're going to see. So in other words, here's the circle. Now we might have to make the circle a little, little smaller in order to be able to see what's going on or at least bring it up. But I think you can understand what's going on if we we can we can surmise here like if we took the uh the actual circle here and made it there we go so here's our circle here okay so we had to basically move the circle down in order to do this okay so now that brings me to what this other number is going to do so if we change this other number here As you can see now, that's going to show me what part of the larger part of the circle I'm going to see. Okay, so that's that's basically what these two numbers do. What part of the circle is you going to see? So you can do one one like this. Okay, and you're going to see the outside part of the circle, but the flip version of it. Or you can do zero one and see the inside of the circle and the flip of it or zero zero and then you see the out, out, other side of the circle make sense i think it makes sense okay so that's the arc in a nutshell now you can play around with all of these numbers and get different parts of the shell here so for example if we made our our radius here let's make this an ellipse cx cy R X R Y. Okay, we're back to our circle. Okay, so let's make it a little wider now. So in order to do that, let's say A is 40 and the Y axis is 60. Okay, so that means that Y here is 60. Okay, so that means in order to fit this in here, I have to bring this ellipse either, even further down. So that's a little closer. That's probably as close as we're going to get using whole numbers. That's pretty close. Okay, so now we have the same idea. We have the rotation of where we want this to be. So we can say this is 1. That's going to show me the entire other side of the ellipse or zero, which is gonna just show me that much, okay? So now you get an idea of what an art can do. So if you have any questions or if you wanted to, to uh, ask me more information, just let me know in the comments below. Have a great day.